Hello and welcome to this video, brought to you by Aegis Mobile Electric. Today we are going over the features and specifications of our PDM14, an innovative and compact power distribution module with features that you'll want to have in your next install. This video will show you how to configure and integrate the unit for your specific use application. We will be right back after this. Let's begin by going over the size of the device and some of its general features. The overall size of this device is approximately five inches by three and a half inches, and is about an inch and a half tall with the included protective cover. This cover is great to prevent accidental contact shorts and makes a clean looking install, especially if you use our optional label kit that we offer that makes future circuit diagnosing easy. To remove the cover, press this push button here in the center, grab the outside edges of the cover and lift straight away from the device. To reinstall it, simply press the cover onto the base until the cover latch snaps into engagement and you are in business. As with all devices, correct landing of the conductors is key to a smooth install. On this cover, a nice diagram is included that shows you where the main power supply leads connect as well as optional expansion positive bus bars or cable is landed. The input and ground cables route here at the bottom of the device and there is space at the top of the device to connect a bus bar to this unfused positive expansion terminal. This is great to expand our RT series fuse blocks and can help reduce secondary wire feeds to other components. This reduces your wire costs and generally allows for a cleaner and more compact installation. In the upper right quadrant of this device, we have a cutoff switch version here of this power distribution module and we also offer a version without it if it is not needed. Also up here is a label, and this has the LED indicators as well that depicts the status of each output terminal. These letters are also conveniently molded into the protective cover as well. Here in the center is another protective cover for the programming switches that you can use to configure the different functions of this device. This device contains three mounting holes, two at the top and one centrally located here at the bottom. The entire unit is rated to a continuous 175 amps of current. The center M6 stud is the positive power input. This would likely be coming from your vehicle battery, and down here at the bottom is the ground input. All three of these stainless studs require a 10 millimeter nut driver or socket and you would want to tighten these down to 60 inch pounds for a secure connection. Next, these are the fuse slots for the positive outputs on either side and then at the bottom here, terminal numbers one through seven are for your ground returns. Terminal number nine is for a positive engine on signal input. So up here we have the yellow shutoff switch. Its function is to turn off the output so that you can safely conduct any maintenance and not have to worry about any shorts occurring. This is great as well if you need to turn off outputs to prevent possible system misuse, for example, if the vehicle is going in for a service and you wish to make sure that the sirens or the radio is not accidentally enabled. Additionally, you can run a remote switch that provides positive 12 volts to terminal number eight, and that will perform the same function as the yellow cutoff switch for a more accessible configuration, such as the switch under the dash and the PDM-14 is in an isolated mounting location, like a trunk, for example. This module has three different groups of fused positive output terminals. Let's go over this handy information sheet you can download that tells us what fuse capacities can be used at which terminal. We will go over these right after this discussion. Disclaimer. Please make sure that you disconnect your electrical system power source before installing components. Additionally, please refer to SAE and ABYC recommendations to ascertain the proper wire type and gauge for your specific application. So here at the top is terminal A that I previously mentioned, which is the unfused positive expansion terminal. This is part of output group 3B, which can support a total combined output of 75 amps with terminal A capable of supporting the full 75 amps if required by itself. Going from the top to bottom here on the left side, we have terminal B. This is also part of the output group number 3B. Terminal B is double fuse capable with current capacity of up to a max of 45 amps using two 25 amp fuses, or alternatively, if you just use one fuse, its current capacity is a max of 25 amps. Terminal C and D are a part of output group 3A and are able to carry up to 40 amps together and 25 amps max through either individual output. So for example, a single 25 amp fuse for terminal C and a 15 amp fuse for terminal D. Next, we have output group number two. This has support for a single 45 amp dual fuse circuit at terminal E and four 25 amp circuits for terminal F through I. Bearing in mind though, total capacity for this group cannot exceed 75 amps. A similar fuse configuration and current capability applies to output group number one as well. Reiterating here at the bottom are ground return terminals marked number one through seven. On the right side, we have output group number one. It essentially mirrors output group number two in that at terminal J, is the 45 amp rated double fuse terminal and below that terminals K through N are 25 amp rated terminals. Once again for total current capacity which is rated at maximum of 75 amps. Alright folks, for the next part of this video I'd like to take a bit of time to explain the programming of this unit. 
Once again, this information is contained in the product information sheet downloadable from the PDM14 product page on aegismobile.com. Under the small cover are 12 dip switches that we will manipulate to configure this unit. Keep in mind that you will need to reboot the device by powering off and then back to on in order for the module to recognize the new settings that you have programmed into it. If you inspect closely to the right, you can see the dip switches have a number next to them. If the white switch dot is to the right, close to the small number, the switch is off, and if it is moved to the left, it indicates that the switch setting parameter is set to on. Switches numbered 1 through 3 are for output group number 1, switches 4, 5, and 6 are for output group number 2, and switches 7, 8, and 9 are for output number 3. These three groups of three switches are for setting the time delay duration for providing current to those specific output terminals after the ignition signal input at terminal number nine turns off. If voltage sense is enabled, as we will discuss later on, the time delay set by the three dip switches will not begin until after the sensed system voltage is below normal charging levels, regardless of whether or not the ignition input signal is also being used. There's a small chart on the reverse of the device that indicates how each dip switch configuration results in a different time delay. They can be configured from 0 second delay to 10 hour delay and also a 24 7 always on setting. Dip switch numbers 10 and 11 are for setting the low voltage disconnection protection to either 12.2, 11.8, 11 volts or alternatively to disable low voltage protection by setting to off. Low voltage protection will override any time delay settings by disconnecting all outputs if the system voltage falls below the setting for more than 15 seconds. The low voltage setting will be overridden if the terminal 9 ignition on input signal is in the on state. Switch 12 12 enables or disables input power voltage sensing to determine whether the device turns on or off. In the off position, the PDM will turn on and off only by receiving a positive ignition signal on terminal number 9. However, if it is in the on position when the PDM will use either the main input terminal voltage to sense when a charging voltage is present, or if a positive ignition signal on terminal number 9 to turn the PDM on. The charging voltage threshold is greater than 13 volts for the 12 volt version and 26 volts for the 24 volt version of this device. Also, if switch 12 is turned on, the PDM requires both the ignition signal on terminal number 9 to be removed and the input terminal voltage to be less than charging voltage in order to start the turn off time delay process. It is important to note that this unit is highly efficient in its on state operating at only 30 milliamp draw and when it is off only uses 1.5 milliamps. For most applications, consumption would likely not be noticed at all. So now that you have an understanding of the switch settings, I would like to go over the LED functionality of this device. These are great to see if anything goes wrong and are amazing for troubleshooting. Back up here on this label, if you see a steady on LED, then that indicates the output is on, and conversely, if it is off, then the output is in the off state. Slow double flash means the output is on, but the PDM is in time delay to turning off from either a normal shutdown situation or from over temp protection or from under or over voltage protection. A rapid double flash indicates that the yellow kill switch is in the on position or the remote kill switch wired to terminal number eight that we previously discussed has positive voltage applied. Slow single flash means the corresponding output has been turned off because the over voltage or over temp has exceeded the operating threshold. And finally, for one of my favorites is the rapid continuous flash that tells you if any circuit has a blown fuse. So in conclusion, we have looked at the specifications, rated current capacities, dip switch programming, and LED indicator diagnosis for this all-in-one product. I would also like to let you know that this product as well as other electrical system components are available from our partners across the globe. Please contact us at our website at www.aegismobile.com if you need any assistance in finding the closest distributor or representative to you and we will be happy to assist you. Feel free to reach out to our customer support team at support at aegismobile.com for more information or to learn more about other amazing components that we offer that can integrate into your electrical system, saving you install time and other costs. We look forward to providing you with our great customer support that our customers have come to expect. Thank you and until next time, bye for now.